Dublin's F and four. It is the strawberry alarm clock, and it is beginning to look a lot like late November. <laughs> and he's he's back. What would Ryan look like if he was doing November? November. Oh, I don't know. Um, I'd say probably. I th- I've thought about this. I'd say probably um, some some t- class of of uh, soldier, mm. uh, in the possibly in the officer ranks who didn't really get his hands dirty. <laughs> you yeah. know, one of those like brideshead soldiers go, I'm terribly sorry, the tea's a little cold. Um, <laughs> could you make another cup? Uh, or, but, but sorry, sir, there seems to be a lot of trouble on the Somme. The Somme? Never heard of it. So I, I'd say probably one of those. Yeah. He'd be nice, but if, if the firing squad was needed, he wouldn't be afraid to pull the trigger. Oh, no. Oh, Listen, no. You, you have to always be ready to serve. Although, on the contrary, I've never actually heard someone say, uh, Tobity's lovely, yeah, but I wouldn't want to get in the wrong F inside of him. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. What happens, I don't know. What happens, Ryan, when you have a, an incident where, like, you know, uh, people are rude to you or anything like that? Do you, yeah. do you ever lose the rag? Do you? Do you ever see? Do you ever? Do you ever try to? You know, that's kind of like well, I yada, why I yada, and you yeah. kind of pretend to punch why somebody. I but, yada, you, yeah. but you know, yada, come on, yeah, yada. I, I do that internally. Oh, a that's lot. good. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it feels good. Sometimes I might even do the physical action of a fake punch, going you. I oh yeah. Yada. yeah. And then I leave it at that, you know, because I don't want to. I, you know, I can't. I'm not. I don't. I it, it yeah. drives me. I just don't like being 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 weighed down with 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 uh, irritation. I just keep going. Yes, you'd be too classy for that, Ryan. I oh, imagine. Jeff, Jeff, I heard somebody recently saying that when people, you know, if they shout at you in traffic, you get angry as well. It's like they they share their their anger, and you, then you're angry. And it's like, a contagion. Yeah, exactly. and and you know what? Um, I remember when when uh, somebody once said to me uh, that their their kid didn't want uh, the, all their kid wanted for Christmas from Santa was to know what happiness was. And I said, I, I, I can't help you there. I can get in touch with the elves and see what I can do and what have you, but I'll do my best. Anyway, somebody called in to us to say, a philosopher, as it happens, it came in to say, you know when you give a gift to somebody? You say, yeah. You know how happy they are to get that gift? You go, yeah. And you know how happy you are because they're happy that you're giving them the present? Yeah. That's happiness. Everyone's winning. And I thought that's great because that, that flips what you were saying about giving yes, out. It so does, yeah. happiness is as contagious as, as uh, irritation. And, and so that's why, yeah, let's be happy. Well, speaking of happiness, yes. the most happy thing that happens on TV mm-hmm. in all year, especially... The 6-1 the, News. <laughs> well, apart from that. Oh, yeah. Uh, all, and happy, the, place, happy place, happy place. Happy place, happy place. If, happy, if ever we needed a happy place. Yeah, if ever the country needed a happy place, it's it's hard to kind of sum up how important the toy show is this year. Yeah, in one so no pressure. It, it, I'm I'm starting to feel the pressure now a little bit uh, more than ever before because um, I think that there are great expectations for the toy show because it's been tough. The amazing kids mm. all over the country um, have been so so good and. Most for the for the most part, and and mm. tonight they just want this big night where they can get completely wasted on skittles and <laughs> coke and you know and all the good things TK lemonade and yeah. you know and just this is their night and I have the weight of the world on my shoulders and and and, and I'm not a big guy but I'm gonna do my best so stick with us yeah we will we yeah. have this we have this will it Ugh. be uh, just you or will there be actual humans that we can see good question. Um, the answer is definitely human beings will be joining me. Okay. Uh, fun sized human beings, we like to call them children. And they will be in studio at Excellent. Uh, two meters, <laughs> two oh. glorious meters apart. Um, so there will be. We have had to work very hard on marshalling this to be careful without being t- uh, sucking the life out of it. I can only imagine. And this has been a very, very tough uh, show to put together. But it's been quite joyful behind the scenes because we know we're getting it right. And now we go live and we just have to at that stage. That's the first car- carriage of the roller coaster going down and we're off. So here's hoping. Has there been a kind of a, a silver lining, though, where people can't ask you for audience tickets this year? <laughs> well, um, yeah, there's <laughs> nobody a, there's, would have asked. No, no I mean, point. It's, it's been, the first it, year. It's been a very quiet visit to the supermarket. Hi, Ryan. I, we went to school together in 1992. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't spoken to you since. Can <laughs> I have a ticket? I mean, it's got so bad now that I'm nearly 
you know, at, at, at the bread shelf looking around going, any, does, do none of you want to ask me for tickets? <laughs> Not one of you? I have What's tickets. wrong with you? Uh, I have tickets in my pocket. They're fake ones for a fake audience that I have at home when I'm, on Saturdays. So um, it's, uh, no, it's, it's very, very strange. Um, yeah. uh, but kind of liberating uh, which is nice you know the show with no audience is going to be a weird one tonight because you know who knows what people um will expect because no, the audience on the toy show night is such a part of the driving the the, the mood in some ways but uh yeah I've, I've had a bit of practice at doing this show with no audience and it's become uh, part and parcel of what i do but now a toy show I've never done without an audience. So I, but I'm, but I'm positive about it. Actually, I'm optimistic. I, I think we're going to pull this out of the bag. Well, speaking of the fun size people, we asked some of them to uh, send us in some questions. Oh, for brilliant! You. And uh, here comes a couple of kids. Great. Hi, Jim, Jim, and Nobby. I'm Mia, and I'd like to ask Ryan Tuberty what is is his um, favorite toy that he's ever tested. Bye. Oh, good question. oh good Mia, question. what a great question, yeah. and, and I love kids you know so often like Mia did just there often refer to me as Ryan Tupper T and it's all one word <laughs> um, yeah it, it runs into each other and and it's it's absolutely tremendous and, and I love it I don't know if you guys ever heard of Stretch Armstrong oh yeah, yeah. but Stretch Armstrong to me is one of those toys that is he's he's, he's, he's an evergreen and it was a little kid uh, called Tig uh, came on the show one night and he said uh, I like Stretch Armstrong and you know <laughs> the toy show <laughs> When you go out on to that show, you and what is it by by you? I mean me. Uh, one becomes quite like off the beaten track. Yeah. So by the time he's got one arm stretch Armstrong, I've got the other. I pull the arm, and then the poor kid falls on the ground, and then I'm dragging him around the ground, like <laughs> sliding. He's sliding around the ground with with stretch Armstrong. So me, I think I'm going to say stretch stretch Armstrong because. It's just, it's a beautifully bonkers toy and it reminds me of a fun moment on the toy show. So thank you for your question. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Well done, man. Mm. Does the other kids get to keep their toys from Brody? Brody, I think that is. Brody, I think it's it's a question that most people want to know because if, if I was a kid like Brody, I'd be watching going, I want them all. Yeah. And what we do is just that there are a lot of children uh, all around the country and uh, they might be in hospital or they mightn't have all the good things that everyone else has. So we make sure that they go to the children who don't have an awful lot or who are might be feeling a bit sick or who just need uh, some fun in their lives. So we, we make sure they get those things. So it's, oh. it's um, yeah, they find really good homes, Brody. That's what I'm saying to you. Nice, nice touch. Mm. Jim, Jim and Nobby, this is Isabel here. And what I want to ask Ryan Tuberty is how does he <laughs> pick who gets the toys on the Late Late Toy Show? Bye. <laughs> hey, Isabel, Ryan Tuberty here. And I will tell you, <laughs> I will tell you my little doubt that uh, what we do is there's we have toy show, a toy show team uh, work behind the scenes. And what they do is they'll make sure that all the children that, that that end up coming on the show, we talk to them, we find out what they like in life. So let's say we talk to a little boy or a little girl, like Stella, my girl, for example, we realized she loved farms and farming and she was great with agriculture. We thought, God, how can we have any crack with that? And then we realized, actually, she's like a human whirlwind. She was so much fun and she's she was brilliant. great. Yeah, remember her? And she yeah. was... And then we got so they match the toy uh, for kids into Harry Potter or kids into dinosaurs, whatever it might be. They match it with the kid who's really into something, and then they come on and they show us what they're mad about. It could be watches, like little John Joe all yeah. those years ago, the horologist. Yeah. And uh, so that's how that works. We match the child to so whatever Isabel you're interested in. It could be makeup, it could be clothes, it could be movies. We'd match you with whatever you, you love talking about. And we'd ask you to come on and talk all about that. That's how that works. So John Joe's a virologist now, not a horologist. Well, that's where the money is now, John Joe. So hopefully he's <laughs> yeah. moved it, and then in a few years' time, he go back to the uh, back to the sponsorship of the Formula One <laughs> wrists of the world. We've one more here, Ryan. Hi, Jim, Jim, and Nabby. I'm just wondering, what's Ryan's top three Beatles songs? His top three presidents, and uh, does he like to? Say bop, 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 bop all the time. <laughs> well, James, James, um, what I'll say... <laughs> he didn't give a name, I thought. No, I know he didn't. Oh. I'm just taking... I'm hazarding a guess that he might be a, a, a double-barreled first-name oh, child yeah. Yeah. with an interest in all things mischievous. Mm. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the answer to those ones and right. send it to you by fax. OK, good. And, uh, to, or not to you. To, and you can pass them on to the little boy in question. I will, I will, yeah. With all my answers to my favourite presidents, which would <laughs> obviously include uh, Lincoln and Clinton and Kennedy, and then yeah. the Beatles songs which will obviously be plucked mostly from Abbey Road
Reload and Revolver. Right. Um, is that okay? Yeah, you'll have to think about that one. It's, it's too, it's too I, big I, a one. It's yeah. too big a one. And yeah. as for that, bop, 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 tune in to the Late Late Show <laughs> 2020 because I'm bop, bop, bop the bejesus out of it. Tonight. Uh, you must have a request in for Biden already, though, do you? <laughs> Get him on the show. <laughs> Oh, you know, you there's know. a good chance with the Irish. Yeah, it could right? happen. I mean, look at uh, let's let's get him into the uh, White House first. We have to get the, the get the other tantrum out, and then get the good the, the other fella in, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, it's not the same, but if it opens more guests, is that good? Oh, I love it. I I think it's great because though you, you know you just wouldn't get half. The, we had Michael J. Fox on last week, and. You know, um, Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Conan O'Brien was. I've never talked to him before. I really liked him, and yeah. and uh, though I listened to his podcast, he's a very funny guy, and um, it was great to see. You know, you you know yourself, fellas. Like when you're, you're with these people that you see, admire, and you know from TV or the movies or music, whatever, and you go, oh, God, do they live up or to your expectations? And you know, the fact of the Zoom thing means that yeah, you do get much more opportunity to to meet people. That you wouldn't expect to to see on, for example, the Late Late Show, and it's, it's working out a treat, uh, as long as you have live guests in studio as well. I think you need the, the blend of, of of both is critical. Uh, Conan did a great interview with David Letterman. I don't know if you heard it. No, uh, I didn't. And Letterman was talking about when he knew it was time to give up. Yeah. He got home and his his family said, "Who did you have on the show today?" And he couldn't remember. <laughs> so that day. So maybe that's worth bearing that's, in mind. When, thank when you. that happens thank to you, you need to... Thank know. you. I, there's, there's one fella in my local supermarket, God help me, he's the nicest guy, and every... Whenever, if I'm, I'm there every other day, and he, every third... And he always says, who's on the show tomorrow night? And I, I and I've spent all day talking about the show tomorrow, and I can't remember one name. And it's not it's not out of badness; it's just because my head is too full yeah. of names. And the poor fellow goes, he must hate his job. I said, no, no, I don't. I just I just can't. I've just come from the office; my head's full. Yeah. But yes, no, but I don't feel like that in in a letterman kind of way. But yeah, yeah. the, the sense in what he says. What ages have you got at home? Uh, I've got nine and seven. Okay, I've got five and two. No, nearly six actually. This is like perfect yeah. peak yeah. toy show oh, um, big time. Yeah, audience member and the kids so it's going to be great <laughs> crack and I hope that everyone enjoys the messing I hope that all your listeners have fun and uh, we'll do our best to make it a great night for you all okay. so tune in everybody have we fun will. getting there and, and um, lads thank you it's always good talking to you you too Ryan thanks Ryan and thanks to the kids for their lovely questions Ryan Tupati. we know See you're you very <laughs> busy so we appreciate your time this week don't mention it fellas good to talk to you as always cheers see you soon